Hi guys, we're going to be talking about three types of selection today. The three types of selection, the first one is called directional selection, meaning it goes in a direction. The next one is disruptive selection, meaning it's interrupted. And the last one is called stabilizing because it becomes more stable and narrow. So those are the three types of selection. Again, throughout the video, feel free to pause it to take notes and to catch up. I'm going to be drawing th three graphs underneath each one of these. I'm just drawing my X and Y axis. The labels are the same for all of these. So um, in the middle, is what we call um, the norm or the average. And the ends are what we would call the extreme. So for example, like a very tall and a very short, those are extremes. Okay, it's kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Hard, soft, and just right. So these are the same on all of these. So this is, again, the, the norm. And this is one extreme. And I'm just kind of abbreviating these as well. And again, here is the norm. Oops, helps me spell it right. And the extremes. Okay. The y-axis is the number in population. Okay, so it's basically the, the total number of organisms. So lower down would be fewer organisms, higher up would be more organisms. So this is the number in population, and again, number in population. Okay. These are actually uh, histograms, and we're going to be looking at basically the top of the curve. I'm going to be using two colors. And the first color I'm going to use is blue. Okay. And so this is my original population. That's my original population. And then I'm going to be using red. So after a period of natural selection and time has gone by, this is going to be my evolved or new population. This will make more sense once we get to the videos. Now let's look at directional selection first. Um, so a great example of this is um, the rock pocket mouse. And if you remember that video that we watched on that. So for example, one extreme here would be white. The other extreme would be black. And the average would be tan. So before the volcanic eruptions, the population looked something like this, okay? They were mostly tan because that was the background of the grassy areas. There may have been a few white ones, there may have been a few black ones, but they probably got picked off and eaten. Whereas after the volcanic event and the black volcanic sand was there, You'll remember that it shifted to this extreme here, okay? So you can see why it's called directional. It's moved in one direction. Now, over time, that volcanic rock will eventually break down, turn into soil, and it will turn probably into grasslands again, and it'll probably be moving. So this is constantly going on with them. So that's the rock pocket mouse that we saw with that one. Let's look at disruptive selection. So again, our original population looks something like this. 
Now you've probably heard of um, the Galapagos Islands. They are where Darwin studied uh, the Darwin finches is kind of famous. And so out there, for example, they have what we call small beaks, which are good for like nectar and snatching little insects and things like that. But also on the island, there's a lot of nuts. And so we have large beaks. The Galapagos are volcanic islands. And eventually a finch found its way out there. Okay, so this is what that finch originally looked like. Over time, there's different habitats on those islands. And so the birds started to turn into different species. Okay, and so oops. what happened is we had a disruption. We actually evolved over time and they got, it looks kind of like an M. Okay, so there became more of these narrow beaked birds and more of these big beaked birds um, for eating nuts and berries. So that's called disruptive. It's interrupted, if that helps you to remember. And again, a good example are um, Darwin's finches. And they changed in size. So again with this, these moved in two opposite directions. They were interrupted. And these are constantly moving back and forth. During drought, there's more of, they switch into the nuts and berries, but when there's floods, they tend to switch back and forth. So these rise and fall uh, depending on the weather. It's kind of cool. There's a great video on that too. The last one is called stabilizing selection. I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. Stabilizing selection. Again, this is my original population. Okay. And um, this is a good one for this is birth weight. Okay, so this is my example is birth weight. Okay. If you are a small baby, you have a pretty rough time of, it, of um, surviving. And if you are a large baby, you had a, and again, we're talking about normal populations. You have a tough time getting out of the uterus. So you can see there's sort of a normal size range. Usually babies are, you know, around seven, six, seven pounds of humans, for example. Uh, but this would exist in any sort of population. So what we're finding is stabilizing selection is actually we have an inward, more and more babies are born in this range. Because before we had modern medicine, if you were too small, you wouldn't have survived. And if you're too large, you couldn't get out. So again, it's becoming more stable. So in this instance, our arrows are moving in together. Okay, so it's becoming more stable. Which one of these do you think is more prone to extinction? Directional, disruptive, or stabilizing? If you said stabilizing, you're correct. Because if there is just a slight adjustment or a huge mutation, this small, narrow group of organisms will go extinct much quicker. All right, so that is directional selection, disruptive selection, and stabilizing selection. Hey, it's Ms. Nichols here, your backyard biologist. Take a moment and get outside.